let's create a simple design to print on fabric. I'm going to start with a cylinder. I'll smooth out the sides. I'll look at it from the top in orthographic mode. And let's say I'll make it five by five. Choose duplicate and I'll change the snap grid from one millimeter to five and I'll move it over five and ten. So there's a five millimeter gap between the two cylinders. Now I'll repeat three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll select that whole row, duplicate, and move it up 5, 10 millimeters, and then duplicate 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I have a row of cylinders, 10 by 10, with a 5 millimeters space in between. The reason I'm designing this particular pattern in this way is because I know that I'm going to be printing on fabric and I want the printed pieces to have enough of a gap in between them so that they uh, allow the fabric to, to bend and move fluidly. You'll see what I mean when we finish the print. So for now I'm just going to select all of these, center it, and while I have them all selected, I want to make sure to change the height too. I'm just going to make this two millimeters, so very small dots. And then I will group all of them together. Give it a name, fabric design, and export as an STL. Now in flash print, I will load my file, fabric design, STL, there it is. Okay, and it's centered on the plate. I'll make sure by choosing move, platform, and center. Whoops, it wasn't quite centered. I'm going to choose start slicing. And because for the purposes of this demonstration, I just need a fast demo model. So I'm going to choose custom material. And I'm going to choose my super fast profile that I created in an earlier lesson. The other thing I need to do is to click on others and scroll down and where it says pause at layers, click the plus sign. And I'm going to pause at layer two and click OK because I need a couple good layers to lay down first. Then I'm going to pause the print, lay down the fabric, and then resume the print. And the fabric will then be um, captured by the plastic on both sides. I'll click Slice. Slice Preview. So this is a 37-minute print. I'll download or send the file via Wi-Fi to the printer. And I'll show you the next step. Uh, after the printer pauses. The print has paused. You can see the first two layers have completed. I'm going to just clean this up a little bit before I add the fabric. So the kind of fabric I'm using is very sheer tool fabric. Um, comes in these rolls. To keep the fabric in place, I'm going to use some masking tape. You want to make sure that the fabric is not bunched up anywhere, that it's nice and flat. Okay, that looks good. On the screen, I'll tap the resume button. And the print resumes where it left off. We'll come back after the print is finished and see what we end up with. The print is finished, so I'll carefully remove 
the masking tape. The tool fabric is very delicate, so I'm being very careful not to tear it. I'll take off the build plate and bring it over to my workbench. Okay, on the workbench, I'm ready to remove the print, but again, I want to be very careful because the fabric is very delicate and it will tear very easily. And remember that there's only a couple layers of plastic underneath the fabric, so I also don't want to accidentally break that delicate bond. So for this process, I'm going to use a, a larger spatula than I usually use for prints. Okay, you can see that one of the uh, bottom pieces of one of the dots separated from the fabric, but the rest of them are good. There's some glue residue from the glue that I used on the build plate that will rinse off with water. And there's a couple loose tads of filament that I can clip up using the clippers. But the overall, the print looks good. You can see how fluid and flexible it is uh, because the space between the 3D printed parts is enough to really allow the fabric to flex a lot. So what would you use this technique for? Well, that's largely up to your imagination. I've seen people use it to make clothing accessories, almost like jewelry. I've also seen people use this basic technique for cosplay, making costumes. Um, if you design carefully, you can have the top of one piece of plastic overlapping the bottom of another, right? If it's coming up at a 45 degree angle. And so that would end up looking like a solid scale type of effect. So there's a lot you can do with it if you are a clever designer.